Hi everyone, welcome back to an episode of Roland's Perspective. Thank you again for joining me this week, and if it is your first time, thank you for tuning in. On this podcast, I basically teach you how I like to live life and not let life live me, and hopefully you learn a thing or two and take these lessons and apply them to your own life, and if not apply them, just be aware of them and see how these things may be affecting your own life. In this episode, it's a little wonky audio wise because I was thinking of things to say and then forgetting them and then shifting and doing something else to clear my mind and coming back and the microphone that I usually use, I can't find the cable for it to connect to my computer right now. So we are doing what we do. We are doing the best with what we got because that, cause that is all that we can do. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, the audio, I've really tried my best to piece it all together to make it um, coherent and cohesive. It was just a little weird, but I did, <laughs> I did my best. So apparently Virgo is all about, first of all, it helps to record these podcasts when I don't set an expectation for how long they're going to be. I'm recording this and when I thought of, oh, it needs to be 40 minutes long, I physically felt like energetically inside, I felt a restriction placed on my heart. It felt over the beginnings of overwhelm. But as soon as I was like, okay, this can be like a little excerpt that I throw in there because this is my podcast and I can do whatever I want and I want to make things easier for myself. And if I have the ability to do that, I'm going to do that. So this can be a little excerpt that I throw in or expand on a little later, a little idea. And immediately I felt my heart open and flow. So I don't know how long this is going to be and that's okay. That's okay. But I've been feeling like I've been lacking ideas lately. And it's only because I've started. I'm going to get back to the Virgo thing. Stay with me. Stay with me. You know how I roll. You know how I roll. It's There's a certain placement in my chart that actually speaks to me arbitrarily switching topics while I'm speaking. It's really amazing. But I've been inching. Like, I'm talking about, like, my toenail just touched the waters of traditional astrology so that's what that virgo thing in the beginning was don't worry we're gonna get back to it because that's how we do over here anyway i feel like i've been lacking ideas because i've been spending a lot of time in my own inner world talking to myself and the trees and my own energy and my own peoples around me that I haven't been recording, clicking the recording button as soon as I get an insight. I do a little bit on TikTok. You should go follow my TikTok if you feel so called. Um, It's really cool if I do say so myself. I, whatever, whenever I have like a little thing that I'm like, okay, let's record. It's small. Let's, let's record a little bit. I'll post it on there and it's, I don't know. I have a lot of insights that come to me and that's really cool and I'm grateful for that. But anyway. I used to do this thing where as soon as I would make a discovery about myself, I would click record and it started to take the sacredness out of my practice of talking to myself in the mornings and journaling and prayer, honestly. And I wasn't connecting with source enough anymore for me. I wasn't intimate with source anymore. I was exploiting my spiritual practice for my podcast in a way, honestly, And I was like, okay, let's take a step back and let's withdraw and let's become a little more private in what we share and what insights we share and what stories we share and to share these stories with the universe. And part of that, part of that, like, mm, I had like a little, a little uneasiness surrounding that because I had this idea of like, if you don't share it, then it didn't happen. And I was also afraid of how I would get ideas if I was, you know, 
being sacred all the time and not sharing anything because that's the point of the podcast to share my journey but what parts of my journey do I keep to myself and which do I share and this is becoming a huge theme in my relationships also but anyway I went a little overboard I think and started keeping too much to myself And not clicking record often enough when I started getting that feeling. Because, look, I've noticed about myself that as soon as I have the feeling to do something, I need to do it. As soon as I feel inspiration coming on, when it comes in the form of like speaking like I'm doing right now, it's because I have the urge. I have the the push in my heart to click record and like you need to you you have things to say so say them and I'm gonna say them whether I record or not and the thing is I need to record or it's not it's not feasible for me to say what I'm say what I say and then re-say it later it's not gonna feel the same it's not gonna be the same it doesn't feel good and I'm also not gonna shut my mouth until I can get to a point where I say the thing because I'm gonna forget I've tried it it doesn't work so I you know my my relationship with discipline is a little different because of that now hold that thought I'm about to derail a little bit Well, this is the first time that I have (laughs) been editing a podcast similar to a video, but I'm editing this and there was something that I just had to add in. There's something I want to say about this part, about this, my relationship with discipline being a little different. It is, but also the core principle of discipline still applies to me. I just realized I need to strike while the iron is hot, but also strike when it isn't. Not only wait for inspiration, but to take and utilize it as it comes. And it sounds simple, but this is something that I was missing for a really long time. First, I would try to, I'm not not sure which I did first, but I tried both things, either trying to wait and wait and wait and wait for the motivation and the inspiration to come and not doing anything, which didn't help nobody. And then working and working and working and working, which took the fun out of things. So I think there's a beautiful, blissful balance. And that's where inspiration actually comes in because I can be disciplined and, and be on top of my shit And also have extra because of discipline. I can plan out my episodes, but also have extra when discipline comes in. So now I can move something that I had planned to another time for maybe a time where I'm not sure what I want to do that week, but I don't have to worry about it because I have this. So I am sure what I want to do this week. And I I just have to put that into action to see if it's actually going to work or not and what comes from discipline what kind of work I produce that comes from discipline and not inspiration but honestly when I start talking about it the inspiration or hmm maybe not inspiration in this case but when I start from discipline I think things will flow but I don't know I'll just have to see but the point is there's a balance striking while the iron is hot but also when it isn't and I used to just wait for the iron to be hot or striking only when the iron was hot and that led to inconsistency and we're trying to find balance around here and that was not giving me that thank you continue (laughs) but anyway I'm recording now and this is I just said something before that I'm going to find the heart to repeat in a different way but my thing is and I'm I'm losing the plot my mind is going off the rails what was I saying at Roland what were we saying is there anyone else that does this uh I feel like I should be more upset with myself about this but I've accepted this part of me this is who I am and like I compare myself to public speakers and people who get TED Talks and stuff. And I'm sure, you know, those things are practiced. They're they're practiced. But is there really anyone else out there like me? Like, is this a good thing? Should I try to, like, fix this about me? I don't know if I can help that my mind 
completely forgets what I'm talking about sometimes. I don't know if I can help that I jump from topic to topic sometimes. It's just the way my mind works. And I accept that about myself. And I feel like I shouldn't accept that about myself. And I'm going to go back to the Virgo thing, I think. This is why editing is so important. What am I going to do in real life when I need to, like, speak and and I lose the plot? What do I do? I'll figure it out then. I trust myself. I can handle it. I can handle it. Well, in modern astrology, Virgo has the reputation of being super organized, all about routine and rules and yada yada, what the fuck. In traditional astrology, apparently, Virgo is actually the breaker of routines, the 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 sign that creates chaos to go towards peace and mercury venus what what virgo is ruled by mercury and so is what else gemini gemini is also mercury ruled now ven virgo is going towards venus which is harmony and shit like that so virgo creates chaos to get towards peace and Gemini which goes away from Venus I think because of Taurus because Venus rules Taurus and I think something else oh I wish I could remember I'm sorry I don't want to apologize um Virgo is going toward okay you need to know that Virgo is going towards Venus Libra that's what it is Yes, Virgo is going towards Venus because Venus rules Libra and Gemini is going away from Venus because Venus rules Taurus as well. That's what it is. Oh, I've never noticed that. Do all the planets do that? Rule two signs like that? Saturn does rule Aquarius and Capricorn. Oh, interesting. I'm not going to get into that. I, I refuse to go off topic. Okay, some things I can't control. Anyway. This is this is why Virgos and Geminis probably, you know, don't get each other because Gemini is the creator of or destructor of peace to go towards chaos. And Virgos like, no, we need to destroy this so that we can get peace. But Gemini's so Virgo is probably looking at Gemini like you're stupid. And Gemini is looking at Virgo like you're going in the wrong direction. I say all this to say, no pressure, Roland. I need to pee. All right, I'm back from my pee break, and it helped a lot because I actually went back and listened to what I was saying because I realized I am really good at writing, but writing and speaking are two different things when it comes to temporal abilities or Girl, I don't even know. When it comes to time, writing takes time. So you don't have to have everything figured out in the moment. But speaking is not the same. So I was like, hmm, when I write and I forget the plot, because it happens, I usually just read what I just wrote so I can get back into the flow and finish, you know, back into that train of thought and finish riding down the train tracks. So I was like, okay, let me you know, go back and listen to this recording. And I did. And I know what I was going to say now. It worked. And that's on working with you instead of against you. Period. So I said all of that to say as a Virgo, I've noticed in my experience that I need to experience two extremes before settling in the balance. I'm just going to release this whole thing. I don't know why recording. I don't know why I'm having issues now. It used to be so easy. I'm not mad, though. Okay, so yes, I've noticed that I need to experience extremes to find my balance. When it came to food, I went from not eating enough, like at all, to eating too much and having to deal with what those things meant for me and coming to a balanced relationship with food when it came to hmm I just I can't think of anything else this is how I work when it comes to boundaries I know what it feels like to have none but I'm still working on having a lot like I'm still trying to find my balance and this is 
This is exactly what I want to talk about. There are some things that I just genuinely don't want to experience because of the deep-rooted people-pleasing that is still finding ways to show up in my life. (sighs) When it comes to boundaries and when it comes to love, I know what it feels like to not have any boundaries. I know what it feels like to be deprived of love for self and from others. Now... I'm at a point where there is a lot of love coming into my life. Love that I did not ask for. Love that I didn't think I deserve. Love that I don't think I do still on some level. And I know that it's going to take me... Oh, even better. Let's talk about like loving how I look, for example. I know what it feels like to completely hate my physical looks, to scrutinize every part of my being and now I'm in this space where I'm like I'm fine as fuck okay and other people have always seen it but it doesn't matter unless you see it like it'll mean nothing if you don't see it it's just empty now I see it and I've been posting a lot on my Instagram and one thing I'm afraid of is losing followers because I'm posting myself too much isn't that crazy it's like I'm scared to give myself permission to love myself not only physically but emotionally with boundaries to love myself so much because I'm afraid that I'll lose people in my life and it's a valid fear It's a valid fear, and I thought it was something small before. I've said it before, but I'm realizing now how big of a a thing it is, how valid it is. Also, I started watching One Tree Hill, for anyone out there. I'm afraid to, to put up boundaries, to go overboard, to potentially become a little egoistic and narcissistic, maybe. Because first of all, people will call me out and I don't like that. It was, I hated when a teacher would call me out in school. I would feel so ashamed, especially because I was a teacher's pet. And I didn't like it that my favorite teacher would get mad at me because what does that mean? Like, it means I'm not good. It means you don't love me. What is, what does it mean? And sure, I was reading too much into it, but I was a kid. And also, this is just the person that I was. Okay, it is what it is. I'm working with who I am. I'm afraid to 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 swing the pendulum in the other direction. I'm afraid to go in the other extreme because I promise you that's the only way I can find balance. Maybe I'll change in the future, but the person I am right now, that is the only way I can know. I can know. I need to experience both extremes to know what they feel like so that I know what balance feels like. I won't know what balance is unless I have experienced lack and overabundance. Is that a thing? What is the opposite of lack? Extreme? I don't know if uh, unless I have experienced the complete lack of something and then the too much of something, I won't know what the balance is. But see, this requires for people to not like me. That's why I think that's why that's where the people pleasing comes in, because when I start loving myself like like, oh, my God, like I set boundaries. And once I figure out what I want and start, you know, setting boundaries according to that and what I'm willing to put up with and not and shit like that I'm afraid because I will lose people and I don't I don't want to I don't even like the idea of that and I'm gonna get over it but that's where I am right now like and that's just crazy that's just crazy and I think this because the I've had this idea that the people in my life you know family excluded because they don't have a choice right now the people in my life like my friends and things knew me and started being my friend when I had absolutely no love for myself when I was self-deprecating when I had no boundaries they loved they loved I suppose that Roland so when Roland changes are they still gonna be there are they still gonna be there when I'm loving on myself and and setting boundaries and saying I don't like when you do that when I'm in my power and and saying no to meeting up because I'd rather, I don't know, I don't know, I have a ritual to do tonight or some shit like that. Like, will they start liking me when I'm really me, when I get closer to me, to who I am? When I start glowing up, not only in career, but like in myself, 
are they still I'm scared that I'm gonna lose people because they were here when I was nothing they were here when I was at my worst and that's who they know me as so I'm just afraid to like really step into my power of just self-love and super self-acceptance because I'm afraid that other people won't like it and fuck them right it's so easy to say but I genuinely am afraid and that sucks I'm afraid to let myself be loved as well. Completely and deeply and fully. That's scaring the shit out of me. (sighs) Who am I if not the person that all the people around me, quote unquote, fell in love with? Who am I when they all leave me because I love myself now and I set boundaries and I hype myself up and I don't need anyone else's validation when I stand in my truth. What would happen if I stopped shitting on myself because I think people expect me to? What would happen? What would happen if I cultivated and exuded inner peace because I'm good? What would happen if I expressed that I am at peace with all of my past decisions concerning my life? What what would happen? I often feel like I think I'm supposed to be hard on myself, either so other people aren't first or... Like, I beat them to it? Or, like, let me do the work for you? But what would happen if I just loved myself, loved and accepted and trusted myself and expressed that to the world instead of keeping myself locked down and jaded keeping myself from not reaching my fullest potential in the emotional manner. Hmm. Thank you for bearing with me. If you are still here, know that I truly appreciate you and you are my person. You are my audience. You don't have to get all the way here. You can cut this podcast off whenever you want and yet you still listen. And I'm very appreciative of that. That means I have found exactly who I am looking for. And you know what? I really have to let people make their own decisions about me. I'm scared. I can only show up as myself. And oh my God, what happens if I believe I'm enough? What if someone doesn't like that? What if someone doesn't like that, that I won't change for them or something? What, it, what, what happens if I believe I'm enough? And they're like, okay, well, you're not enough for me. I'm going to go. They have the right to do that. And I can't take that personally because it's not personal. Because would I stay in a relationship where they are completely okay with who they are? They're not willing to change. And I don't like it. I would. That's why I have a problem when it's the other way around, because I wouldn't have enough love for myself to leave. Hmm. Hello, editing rolling here. It's like me saying I wouldn't do that to you and expecting someone to stay with me even if they're not happy. Girl, that's unhealthy. And if I really love someone, I'm not going to ask them to stay with me if they're unhappy, especially if I'm, if I'm not willing to change. Of course, it's going to be hard emotionally, but I love you, so I want you to be happy. I truly don't believe you can love someone and not want them to be happy, if even if that means it's without you. Like, that's not love. That's obsession. And maybe this perspective will change the older I get and the more experiences I have. But 
I'm with my soulmate right now and I literally would not take it personally if she came to me with the concrete argument like hey I don't like this about you da 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 I'd be like okay you have some things to work on or you just don't feel like this is for you you just don't like this part of me okay cool I mean like in the long run I'd be like okay cool I love you so I'm not gonna force you to stay with me I'm gonna be a little sad but also like I get it because this is not something I'm willing to change about myself just an example okay bye also I just want to clarify because it I wasn't really getting my point across when I say she might have some things to work on I don't mean oh my god you don't like me so obviously you're the problem no I'm experiencing a situation in which I had resentment towards a person because I didn't speak up for myself and I didn't like their strong personality but that's only because I didn't have a strong personality of my own or feel safe enough to speak up for myself and those are problems that I needed to deal with those are things that I needed to go within and deal with that that is not the person's problem for me to be like I don't feel safe speaking with you especially when they've shown me that I can be safe with them action wise like they've never it's just my own trust issues coming up so I mean something like that that's what I mean when I'm like okay you have some work to do I'm not sitting here saying I'm the best thing since sliced bread but I am And I am because I know that I'm not perfect. And I think that's perfect. Okay, bye for real. One thing I would like to talk about. Expressing yourself for the sake of doing so instead of trying to get a certain response out of someone. I saw this on Twitter. Let me go find it, actually. Let me go find it right now because I'm going to read it. It's by Let My People Glow. Let My People Mitchell Clark Mitchell at Mitchell C Clark okay he said just because you don't get the response that you were looking for doesn't mean they didn't hear you say what you have to say because it needs to be said not because you're expecting a specific response from a specific person and I cannot tell you enough I cannot express enough how growing up I had to shift my being to avoid confrontation because confrontation meant meant death to my child brain it meant the world is ending so I I had to change. I had to read in between the lines because people didn't communicate with me. They didn't tell me what they wanted. I had to figure it out myself. And I had to manipulate my words, my feelings, what I wanted in a way to please. And and not even just to please, but to avoid my world ending. It's crazy how I'm still finding out such deep shit about myself. It it never ends, does it? I, I just really want to get to a place where shit like this doesn't affect my relationships anymore. But I'm so scared of that person. Apparently, in traditional astrology, Virgo is the sign known for being afraid of their own potential. And that's funny. Because I am capable. I am amazingly smart genius really genius intellect genius creativity it's crazy how much I shit on myself it's crazy how much I don't trust myself but I'm so scared to do so because who is that who is that powerful being that's scaring the shit out of me and that I do not know why is it because I'll lose some people I'll gain others Why is it scaring my soul so deeply to accept my potential and to let the shit that does not nourish me go? The shit that is hindering my growth, my capacity for love, my capacity to give love, my capacity to receive love. Why am I so afraid to let it go? 
Reading that tweet was so powerful. Expressing self for the sake of doing so instead of trying to get a certain response from someone. In this way, I have been I have been manipulating my life. Because I'll say something to elicit a certain response instead of just saying what I want and letting the cookie crumble, letting the chips fly, instead of stepping into the unknown with this other person, instead of making space for the possibility of misunderstanding because of that deep need to be understood that I am letting go of. I'm letting go of all this shit. Being aware is the first step and a willingness to let it go. But see, that's the thing. That willingness to let go of the fear of my potential. I don't know what's blocking that, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. It's scary. It's scary. And I don't know why it's so fucking scary. Hi again, it's Editing Rolling here, and I have a few new insights. I recorded this um, some days ago, so I've, I have a few new insights to add. I think what it is, you know, like I've had time to process. So I think what it is, is just I'm so used to putting myself last, and putting myself first is scary. And, you know, I've... I've talked about in this podcast before, on this podcast before, about grieving your old self. And it's a process of letting go of someone who you've identified with so much that you cannot imagine who you are without certain traumas. When you identify with your lower self, when you identify with your traumas, I have a video on my YouTube channel that talks about it. It's called Let's Let's Discuss with an Open Heart, I think. Let me let me look it up to be sure. YouTube from this perspective. It's called I Have Everything I Need to Succeed, Identifying with Your Lower Self and Setting Mental Boundaries. I just want to say again, I'm really thankful for everyone that watches my YouTube videos. I I just I love you. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me because I put a lot of energy and work into what I do and I'm becoming to become I'm becoming very confident in what I do and having that feedback. The only way I know that I'm putting out quality is is user is is user customer. I don't even know guest audience feedback. So hearing comments lets me know, let's, hearing um, reviews on the podcast lets me know that I'm in going the right direction, that the work I am putting in is paying off. And there's a thin line. I'm going to get back to what I was saying, I promise. There's a thin line between like using this user feedback as a basis for my confidence and also just using it to be a basis for my competence and then using that competence or that proven competence to become confident from oh that's really good i might i might write it write a ted talk about that be confident based on competent not self-esteem and I don't know, like just being working in the digital media age and how to become confident from user feedback, but not base your confidence on it. And I, ah, ah. wait a minute, though, because I just said everything in two sentences. OK, I guess there's more to it. Ah, no, I'm feeling a new idea. Papa. Anyway, yeah, I just think that I'm in a mini grieving process again. Because it's the unknown. It's it's simply fear of the unknown. I don't know who I am without this trauma. (laughs) But, you know, knowing me, I'm going to let it go. It's going actively every day, every second, every moment I am letting go. And I can feel it leaving my body because I'm anxious and I'm scared and change is coming. And that's how I know. (sighs) And it just takes a lot of sitting with yourself and saying, it's okay. 
you're changing and that's good lean into it like it's gonna be good for you lean into it like you know it's gonna be good for you everything you're asking for this is how you get it you cannot get what you ask for without being the person capable of having those things and This is the difference between forcing yourself to make healing your purpose and allowing things to naturally happen based on your desires. I was just watching a tarot reading and the lady was saying how social media has done a really good job at fooling people into thinking they need to be a certain way to manifest. And you don't. You don't have to be fully healed. You can manifest when you're angry. You can manifest when you're depressed. You can manifest whenever you do not have to be fully healed happy light and completely integrated your shadow to manifest that's not for I, I, that's not feasible like you've been manifesting your entire life the current position you're in inner world wise and just how you see the world that's because of mechanisms you had to develop when you were younger to survive and if you're actively letting go of those survival tactics then you can probably see how your life and your mindset towards life has improved and how synchronicities are happening like that's manifesting honey and when you ask the universe for things whether you script or you pray and you you use this moon cycles or whatever you can get you can manifest you are not powerless when you are depressed you are not powerless when you are angry like do what you need to do but don't sit there and think that you're you don't have the power within you it's within you regardless it is you that power is you and I don't want to sit here and be like anger is not you and depression is not you because I have my own personal annoyances with saying stuff like that but if that works for you then okay see it that way like you're always gonna be the core of light that is in you that awareness that creator that creative energy you're I I'm hesitant to say don't identify like yourself by saying you are depressed or what whatever else. Just because I believe in wholeness and integration and not cutting parts of ourselves out in the name of like love and light. But, you know, I'm sure as time goes on, I'll be able to explain that a little better and have more experience of vocabulary to really get to what I'm trying to get at. But babes, the darkness is one of the best times to manifest. It's like you're a seed in the soil. I remember around, I've talked about this period of my life before, around October, November, late October to around like February-ish, I was hella depressed, very much so depressed. And it was at this bottom, at the bottom, where I could only go up. So everything I asked for, it was like, it wasn't even from desperation because I was so, I was too tired to be desperate anyway, but I was just in this, this, this darkness. I was, I had a cone of silence around me where I could only focus on my inner world and what I wanted to get out of life because I was so depleted. And so I wrote down everything that I wanted and best believe that shit is coming to fruition because I told myself that though I'm at that time too, I told myself I may be depressed, but like, and I'm pretty sure I saw stuff that really helped me and supported me in this mindset. But I was like, I'm a flower. I'm a seed in the darkness. I started spending more time in the dark. I used to be very afraid of the dark and I'm actually very proud of myself because this is one of the moments where I overcame something. I'm very proud of myself because I used to be so afraid of the dark, but now I can sit in the dark. Now I can sleep in the dark. Now I can get up and look around in the dark. I'm not afraid of a monster coming at me. And if I am, I, I, I'm more able to sit with that fear sometimes it feels like I've gone backwards and I actually haven't you know made progress but what does that say about all the times that I've actually sat in the dark and went to sleep in the dark and not been afraid or been afraid and sat there anyway and trusted myself and trusted my guides and trusted that I was okay and nothing was gonna pop out at me and everything was gonna be fine You know, it's not fair to me to say that I haven't made progress. It's not fair to past Roland that has definitely made progress. It's not fair to present Roland that has done all the work to get here. That's not fair. 
the darkness is where creation happens space is dark without the stars is is dark without the balls of gas it is dark and cold underneath the soil where you plant a seed it incubates in the dark it's so beautiful because soil inherently is not life but there is life force energy in the soil i feel like soil is just a medium a transport maybe maybe the energy like climbs over the soil to get to the earth or something i don't know but the 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 seed but then again the seed is physical and so is the soil but the thing that makes the seed grow up is the innate life within the seed coupled with the supportive life of mother earth around it the 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 love the supporting life of the of the guides around you your dreams are supported in love i feel like i'm channeling messages at this point your feelings are are supported with love and i'm talking to myself here and it's so beautiful roland because editing i can say i can hear that i'm a genius and i love myself and hearing that from my own voice feels really good so i'm going to start making more voice notes for myself Look at me learning and growing. I feel really good. I don't remember what I started this talking about, but here we are. Here we are. I feel like I've said everything that I wanted to say, so <laughs> it's okay. Okay, bye. This has got to be one of my most vulnerable episodes today because I'm not even past this yet i'm talking about it while i'm growing through it huh and you know i'm not mad about sharing it because if i wasn't supposed to share this i promise i wouldn't i actually wrote at the top do i overshare grow in silence ups and downs grow through it what do i share to be good and genuine what do i keep to myself to be private and sacred. And honestly, I'll just know. I'll just know, I think. I think I just need to trust myself more, maybe. But yeah, just express yourself for the sake of doing so and let the chips fly. If someone is confused, trust that they'll ask for clarification and trust that you know yourself enough to the point where what they think doesn't affect your perception of yourself. I'm going to cry. I feel like I'm really touching deeply into myself right now, into my inner child. I really feel like I'm touching my... Okay, that sounds wrong. (laughs) I just feel like I'm connecting very deeply with a hidden part of myself right now. And I'm very grateful for this because I do not want to break my wrist journaling and calling it shadow work. I've really been exploring different forms of shadow work. And this is one of them. It's happening right now. And you are getting a rare look at shadow work in real time. Quote unquote time, LOL. But it does help to know that by the time this episode goes out, I won't be feeling this way anymore. So you don't know me for real, LOL. Trust that what I express is enough and that I know myself enough so that if any misunderstandings happen, we can correct them if need be. I'm so scared of someone misunderstanding me. Why? Did something happen in my childhood where someone misunderstood me and ran with that shit and had me thinking, shit, what did I mean? Like, had me questioning shit or something? What happened, Roland? What happened, baby? I don't want to meditate and go within and figure it out. I want you to tell me right now. But time will tell. Time will definitely tell, especially since I put it out there. So it's okay. I didn't, I really, really didn't expect to get this vulnerable, y'all. But I'm touching a wound right now. Thank you for being here. I feel like I'm at the point where the people listening to this episode are my people and you're not listening to this episode to figure me out and wish me 
what's the opposite of well? Wish me unwell. (laughs) So I just appreciate you for being there and listening and for being on the journey that you are and for bringing me with you in a sense. We are definitely in this shit together, whether it seems like it or not. Our lives are connected. It's called the butterfly effect. It's called it's called chaos theory. I'm going to start practicing expressing myself for the sake of doing so instead of trying to get a certain response out of someone or instead of trying to avoid a certain response. Wow. It's manipulative and you're not trying to be, but it's un- it's disingenuous. It's inauthentic. And y'all know that's my whole spiel. I'm going to sit here with this for a little while. Yeah. And I'm going to keep the I'm going to keep the thing recording, but I'm going to sit here for a minute cuz I just really need to. I'm letting people pleasing go. And it's taking a really long time because there are a lot of layers. And it's hard to believe that I deserve love like this. Maybe I deserve love because I'm trying. But what if I wasn't trying? Doesn't that person still deserve love? The affirmation, I love myself completely and deeply. Like, I love and accept myself completely as I am in this moment. I don't know if I'm relating to that as deeply as I, as I could, as deeply as is possible. Because I feel like when I start internalizing that belief, that affirmation, I hit a ceiling or a sort of brick wall. I hit a limit. I question myself. I'm, I question I guess the validity of that statement in a way it's like as I am right now like I'm not completely healed and you I don't think you ever can be but I think you can definitely be in a place where past experiences are not controlling your current actions but what does that always mean because some what does it mean when it comes to communication and your capacity for love And whether or not you want to work on it. I definitely want to be authentic. So I think that's why this is coming up. But I also believe that you can accept parts of yourself without wanting to change them. At least not now. And being okay with that. But my thing is, I'm scared that if I'm okay with that, the other person won't be the other person will be like, well, this isn't going to work for me, so I'm going to go. Do I have a fear of abandonment? Maybe that's what it is. Talking it through is nice. Wow. I feel like my chest is like open and raw, like not where my heart is, but the other side. I've been feeling my heart being very open lately But I just really feel like I just cracked the heart of my inner child. I'm surprised I'm not like bawling, but I also have been crying a lot lately. And it's crazy because cancer season just ended. It just ended. So where was these tears two weeks ago, Fran? Leo season came in. All of a sudden, I want to cry. I do have a Leo moon. Is there any correlation there? Because apparently it has been scientifically disproven that the celestial bodies have any effect on our physical beings. So, but maybe they have effects on our spiritual beings, you know? Um, Emotions aren't always physical. Like, they're not physical at first. I wonder what it's like for emotions to manifest physically in your body if they are healthy. Because I know what stored emotion in your body can could manifest as but does healthy emotion manifest in your body too like 
do you have clear skin if I don't know some shit if you have boundaries or some shit I don't know like that's just what like is there anything like that so I have an example editing Roland here I've noticed that I've been laughing a lot heartier lately. I love laughing. It's one of my most favorite things to do in the world. And I noticed that my laughs seem to really come from my chest now. And they're really unadulterated. Like they're just, they're so unbound, they're boundless. My laugh is boundless. I used to... I don't I didn't really notice where my laugh was coming from before but I was like voted cutest laugh in middle school and that has been ringing in my head for the past uh 6 plus 12 is 18 19 20 for like the past 8 years that has been ringing in my head and I think that I've been trying to like keep my laugh cute But the more that I work on my self-expression, the more my laugh becomes very unique and like kind of in a way ugly, just like not as as curated as I have made it, I think. Like I did I did have a quote unquote cute laugh, whatever that means. And I think I tried to upkeep that and not like laugh for real I guess and in the past two years I'm not sure exactly when this started happening but I developed a snort when I when I really feel like really happy (laughs) when I feel really happy I'll snort and I thought it was so ugly at first kind of and I tried to hide it a little bit I was a little embarrassed but I quickly realized it wasn't going away and I just I didn't embrace it, but like, I was like, it's there. And then I noticed when I went camping with my girlfriend that she also snorts when she thinks something is really funny and she thinks I'm really funny. And so that's just really hot and really cute. And I just, I love her snort and we snort together and it's really great. (laughs) So (laughs) I noticed that now I laugh bigger I laugh more expansively and my laugh comes from that place in my chest that I told you I broke open. My laugh comes from there and it feels really true. And I I don't I'm not that doesn't mean it wasn't true before, but I just feel so happy and good when I laugh and I think that's a way healthy emotions manifest in our body. I've cleared a lot of blockages that when it comes to communicating my self-expression, so that throat chakra, and I don't know if I'm at my fullest, highest extent yet. I doubt it. <laughs> I think I have a lot of growth to um, go through, and I'm really excited about that. I wonder how it's going to be when I'm very comfortable with setting my boundaries and the potential of losing people because... Let me read this quote I actually found today in an Instagram bio that I think is the best thing in the world. I would rather adjust my life to your absence than adjust my boundaries to accommodate your disrespect. I know that's right, Maria. I know that's right. Period. So, yeah, I wonder how my self-expression how my voice I've noticed that when I clear blockages in my throat I I sound better when I sing and I mean that could definitely also be because of the hours I have put into practicing my vocal cords and to rehearsing and and training and just keeping my vocal cords warm I've invested a lot of time into that so I'm sure massaging my vocal cords has I think it all goes together I think it all works together and I'm excited to see what other ways processing your emotions in a healthy way can manifest in your physical body because our bodies are such magical things and I just I just I wonder I wonder what my body what it would feel like to be in this body what my essence would feel like to be in a home where I ate things that made me feel really good and completely avoided things that didn't and avoided amounts of things that made me feel bad and got enough sleep every night and relaxed 
but also worked hard so that mentally I am confident in my capabilities and I trust that I can produce quality work consistently and what it would be like knowing walking around knowing that I overcome challenges consistently like what would that feel like that excites me okay bye I'm just afraid of accepting myself and other people not willing to accept me. I'm afraid of losing people because I'm not willing to live up to their what they want, which is fine. You know, logically, it's okay for someone to say, hey, I don't want to mess with you because this is just not for me. It's not I'm, it's not I'm not going to be happy about this. I don't want to do this. That's completely okay. But why does it feel like this? I think this is one of those shadow works where I just kind of feel it out a little bit. I mean, it's always feeling it out, but usually I'm crying a lot. Life still has a lot to surprise me with, I see. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that the novelty of life never wears off unless I start getting too comfortable. That happens. I get too comfortable. I lose my gratitude and suddenly all the days are the same, even though the clouds are never in the formation that they were before. The leaves don't have the same arrangement. The trees don't have the same arrangement of leaves because some have fallen off. The wind has blown in this direction today instead of this one. The same cars never pass down the street. And I think those are beautiful reminders that life changes every day. Like every day is a new day. Every day is a new day. And I don't want to get complacent in the way and in, in the sense that I start taking my days for granted you know because I have definitely been there before where I'm like waiting for something to change and life is losing its spark and novelty and I'm like this shit is boring it's because I've I've lost my spark to make it not boring but then again I also have been uncomfortable with peace (laughs) because I'm so used to chaos So I have called life boring when, in fact, I was just given space to rest before things picked up. So and I I know that now, so (laughs) I can better maneuver those periods of perceived stagnancy when I could look at it differently and just go, hey, I'm given some time to rest up and become the person capable of whatever is coming next, you know? wow, I feel the right side of my body kind of just changing. I've always considered the right side of my body to be where my inner child lives. And it's it started when I first started this whole self-awareness journey, this part of my body felt like a monster. It felt like rage and caved something. It felt like a shadow. It felt like something I had casted out in a way and was ravenous for love and attention and and just just rage and darkness, just darkness. And now I'm just feeling changes all throughout the right side of my body, my leg, my chest, my arm, my abdomen a little bit, really my leg and my chest. That's where I feel it. You know, that's a beautiful way to start your journey of just being aware of your body's subtle energies. Where are you feeling emotion? It doesn't have to mean anything either, Roland. I got to I got to remind myself of that cuz I do read into I still read into things a lot. And I have to remind myself that everything doesn't have to mean anything. And I'm still wrapping my head around that cuz that just doesn't make sense to me, but it's something that I want to experience. It's a lesson I'd like to experience. So, I will. And I'm no longer there's this affirmation that's in um one of my it's it's one of the cards in my love yourself deck 
How to Love Yourself Cards by Louise Hay or Louise May. One of those ladies. And it's like, I accept the past and hold on, I'm going to find it. I found it rather quickly, in fact, and I really love that. It took me about eight cards, and I could say, oh my gosh, Roland, you're not intuitive enough. You didn't, you know, you didn't shuffle the deck and it came out. But it could have been on the complete other side of the deck, 63 cards away, and it wasn't. So I'm going to choose to look at it in a positive light. And that's just a little example of how I really love to live my life. There are so many beliefs out there, man. There are so many things to believe, so many energies calling for your attention. And you get to choose what to let in. And that used to scare the shit out of me and be really annoying and hard and difficult. But now I really love that idea because I get to choose and I choose what makes me feel really good. I choose what makes me really feel good. Maybe I could live by that whenever things get difficult, whenever I have a difficult decision to make. What makes me feel really good? Okay, anyway. The affirmation is, I forgive all past experiences. This is what really irritated me. I accept all that I have created for myself, my past and my present. I'm a, I'm willing to allow my future to happen. Now, I read the whole thing, so someone out there, if you like it, write it down. That's for you. But this part, I accept all that I have created for myself, my past and my present. What do you mean I created my past? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? I started getting really defensive. I was like, I didn't create abuse. What are you talking about? But then I zoned in and focused on what I had control over at that time. I acknowledged that there are things that I cannot control, but that doesn't also mean that everything is the universe's fault. And I played no part in how I perceived my past and the behaviors I developed to cope with that past. And when I thought about it like that, I got less judgmental of me and less angry at the universe and at the card and at Louise Hay. And now I've been thinking about that affirmation a lot. And now I think I'm starting to understand it. I did my best. I perceived things the way I was supposed to. I perceived things in the way that made the most sense for me in that moment. And I trust myself now in this present moment so much that I can say I trust my past self and all of the actions that my past self took, all of the thoughts that my past self had to get to the point where I made certain actions to become a people pleaser. I'm not mad at myself for that. I did what I thought. I've always done what I thought was best in the present moment, always. Mm, I've always done my best. That's also an affirmation that hurts to say a little. But I ha- I accept all that I've created for myself, my past and my present. And this is easier to say, obviously, when your present is like awesome and reflective of all the work you've been doing on the inside. But my past has been really hard and... It takes a a certain, first of all, not judging yourself and takes a certain deep undressing in the mirror to look at yourself and be like, I caused myself suffering in the past. Like, yes, life was hard, but I made it harder for myself in some ways. And that doesn't, you know, that's not necessarily a bad or good thing. It's it's just what happened because I did my best with what I had at the time. This is a harder um, justification to apply to something like smoking, even though you know smoking not going to do shit for you. Like, I don't know what to say to you if you do know better and you still do the other shit. But maybe you were scared or maybe you genuinely didn't care. You were okay with the consequences. But it's safe to say you still did your best, right? I don't know. That's that doing your best. That's a whole other podcast. 
I accept all that I have created for myself, my past and my present. I am actively creating my future right now. I'm actively creating my present moment or this present moment I have created in the past already. I don't know. But I do forgive all past experiences. And I could definitely say this now and then wake up tomorrow and be like, man, fuck that shit that happened 15 years ago. What the fuck, man? I can't believe da 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 And that's completely okay. That's fine. So I was talking about how I would like to experience the lesson of not everything having to mean something because I don't understand that yet, but that's something that I am willing to experience, something that I want to understand, and so I will, and I have no doubt of that. And that's what that's what I think creating my future means. I think that's what actively manifesting from your emotional state means, I think. I just... I have this feeling and I have this thought all the time that I would like to know what it's like to experience shit. What is it? I need to write it down. Um, think not everything has to mean something. Yes. I say to myself, not everything has to mean something, Roland. And that's it. I don't think about it, but I know without like any doubt I'm going to experience that lesson play out in real time in my life at some point. Because that's what my past has been. That's like that's why I just I I get the card now. I accept all that I've created for myself, my past and my present. I get that I have programmed or had my program, had my subconscious programmed for certain things. And the way I perceived life, like that's how I went about life, especially in high school when I was really like getting into thinking for myself and having my own I don't know, like a little agency over some things, like my perspective. I was a real pessimistic bitch. Like, and that's the shit that would happen in my life. Like, life was hell. And I mean, objectively, life was hell. But I was also making it hell on the inside. Like, being me was not fun. Being me was not as fun as it is now. Being me was not as precious, It well, precious feeling as it is now. And so when I say... I my whole thing is being authentic. I believe that everything that's coming up in my life is all going towards that goal. Like how else would I come across expressing myself for the sake of doing so instead of trying to get a certain response out of someone if my whole thing wasn't authenticity and freedom? Like, that's my whole thing. And I think that if I were to have a different goal, different shit would come up. So I think it's beautiful how you can have an intention like that, like a desire deep within you to be like, I really want to be a genuine person. How can I do that? Every little milestone on the way will take you closer to being that genuine person. So I don't think... I will ever be completely healed. I don't think that that's a possible thing. I mean, white or a God energy. Okay, cool. You do that. But I don't know. And I think I got a couple more lifetimes to go before I get there. But in this lifetime, I want to focus on at least now. No, I think it's this lifetime. I'm really focused on being genuine and free. So that's what every little thing will take me to. So that's why when it comes to some things, I'm willing to accept that I don't want to work on that because that acceptance is genuine enough. And I don't I don't really feel the need to always 
And this is one of the first things like in my life that I've been willing to just accept and not change about myself. But there are some things that I just am genuinely okay with, like how I jump around in this podcast. I'm okay with that. It's, that's what genuineness means to me right now. Maybe it'll change, but I'm good in the hood right now. Hmm. But yeah, not everything meaning something. I'll experience that one day. I'll experience that lesson one day. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Could you read a lesson? But like on Twitter or something, someone's like, oh, uh, not everything has to mean something. Remember that. And boom, a seed, is, a seed is planted, a desire is woken up, and without even knowing it, your subconscious is bringing up. Okay, someone interrupted me in that last clip editing role in here, and I never finished it. So I'm going to finish what I was saying in that clip. A seed is planted, a desire is had, and before you know it, the universe will bring you an experience or multiple experience in which you will notice, oh, hey, I'm reading into things a lot and not everything has to mean something. And as a Mercury ruled person, this really shows up when I'm deciding what to say and like how to say it. And I scrutinize over the smallest shit, y'all. I'm talking about whether or not to use a comma here or not. And I go between what's like grammatically correct and what feels good to me because I really don't like subscribing to shoulds. Like, if it feels good to me, I'm going to do that, even if it is technically wrong. I don't give a fuck. (laughs) But that's all I had to say for this episode. I was not expecting it to be as long as it is. But I will leave you with a quote that I wrote on January 22nd or January 2022. Either way, it was for sure January 22nd. 22. So, trusting that whatever I experience or am to experience, what I am manifesting, what future I am creating for myself is the most perfect one for my highest good and self as my deepest desires are tethered to my soul and the universe says yes to them. Thank you so much for tuning in to another week's episode of Rome's Perspective. I appreciate your listening ear and your presence in my life and my presence in yours so much. Please don't forget to leave a review because it really helps me understand and quantify if my efforts are working. So I would appreciate a review or a comment or a DM, something, a share, and let me know that you share so that I know that what I'm doing is paying off. It feels good on the inside, but the world doesn't care about how you feel. I need results. (laughs) All right. Thank you. And I'll hear you next week. Bye.